Hey everyone, my name is Max Shrimp, and I'm the District Forester with the Montcombe, Kent, and Ionia Conservation Districts. Today I'm going to be talking to you about one of my favorite trees, the Eastern Hemlock, and one of its biggest threats, Hemlock woolly adelgid. Eastern Hemlock, also known by its Latin name, Tsuga canadensis, is one of Michigan's evergreen conifer trees. It's present in about three quarters of the counties in Michigan, including the entire Upper Peninsula. According to the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, there are approximately 170 million eastern hemlock trees across the entire state. Considered a slow grower, eastern hemlock is shade tolerant, meaning that it is able to grow under a very thick canopy with very little sunlight. This gives it an advantage over shade intolerant species or those that need lots of sunlight, such as maples, black cherry, and aspen. What's amazing about it is that if you have a typical maple tree that is about 18 to 20 inches in diameter, which is across the middle of the tree, uh, we can estimate that that's about 60 to 70 years old depending on where it's growing. In comparison, a shaded hemlock can be about the same age while only being about 8 to 10 inches in diameter. Eastern hemlocks are known to take 250 to 300 years to reach maturity, reach heights of approximately 100 feet, and can live upwards of 900 years. Among the conifers, eastern hemlock stands out in the woods. It shares a conical shape like most conifers, but the needles are significantly different. Being that they are evergreen and only a quarter inch to half inch in length of maturity and a dark glossy green in color. A key characteristic of the needles is actually on the back. As you can see, they have these two light bands running down the middle of the needle. The cones of the hemlock are also very unique and at maturity are only a half inch to three quarters of an inch in length and hang from the branches. This is where the seed is stored. The bark is quite brown and forms large scaly fissures along the trunk. This is quite different from the more plate-like bark that is seen on the eastern white pine. Due to a shallow root system, eastern hemlock is susceptible to prolonged drought until it becomes a sapling or about five to six feet in height. This also makes them quite susceptible to blowdowns if exposed without adequate cover. This species prefers a well-drained soil and steep rocky slopes. Usually you can find hemlock surrounding upland streams, but you won't find it in the low wetland areas due to poorly drained soils. So why should we care about the eastern hemlock? After all, isn't it just another conifer? Yes, it is but its specialized growing conditions lend themselves to unique ecosystem types. Due to its affinity for rocky stream sides, it has been shown that the presence of eastern hemlock provides adequate shade during the summer months, which keeps the stream temperatures cooler than those that might be more exposed, and provides a degree of insulation during the winter that allows for the survival of aquatic species that live in those streams. So what is hemlock woolly adelgid, and what does it actually do to the hemlocks? HWA stands for hemlock woolly adelgid. An adelgid is similar to an aphid in both size and appearance. This adelgid is native to Asia and was inadvertently introduced to the eastern United States in the early 1950s. As with most invasive species, Hemlocks in Asia grew with HWA and developed their own defenses against the adelgid so that it was able to tolerate it. However, when it was introduced to this new environment, HWA found a ready-made food source because our natural hemlocks don't have this natural resistance to it. It has wreaked havoc on the native ranges of eastern hemlock and its cousin, the Carolina hemlock, in both the Appalachian and Smoky Mountains. HWA feeds through a straw-like mouthpiece, which is called a stylet, which it then inserts into the twig at the base of the needle on the underside of the branches. So you actually have to flip it upside down to see. It essentially sucks the sugars and nutrients which are produced by photosynthesis out of the needles before they can reach the rest of the tree. This is ultimately what causes that tree mortality after it occurs for three to five years. Hemlock woolly adelgid is most visible during the winter months, from November through March, as its egg sacs are present on trees. These will be on the underside of the needles where the adelgids feed and look like small cotton balls. Currently, the news in Michigan is good. 
Hemlock woolly adelgid has only been found in five counties on Lake Michigan. The Department of Natural Resources has been working to treat those known infestations in hopes to keep it from spreading. The adelgid is not a fast mover, unlike the emerald ash borer. It depends on birds, wind, animals, and humans to spread at far distances. It also does not tolerate the cold well, so the spread potential lessens as you move north. So what can you do? The most important thing you can do is to keep an eye out. Early detection is really the key in controlling the spread of not only HWA, but pretty much any invasive species. Whether you have a few hemlocks in your yard, or you're at a state park with an entire stand of them, stop and take a peek. It only takes a couple seconds to just check some low branches. Get to know what your trees look like, and make sure you know what they look like when they're healthy, so that you know what to start to look for if they become unhealthy looking and a little bit yellow. You should also be careful in the spring when hiking or traveling through areas of hemlocks, particularly between March and June. This is when the adelgids are moving around quite frequently and could potentially be picked up on yourself or anything you're transporting, and you could inadvertently move it somewhere else. And as always, never move firewood and always burn it where you buy it. If you do find HWA, you should report it as soon as you can to your local conservation district or the Michigan Department of Natural Resources in the Forestry Division. The more information you can report, the better. Photos, exact location, and the level of infestation helps to determine a quick course of action. For those who are tech savvy, there are a couple apps that you can use for reporting. The Midwest Invasive Species Information Network, or MISIN app, and the Great Lakes Early Detection Network app allow you to report invasive species, including hemlock woolly adelgid, in real time. For more information, you can find hemlock woolly adelgid under the Forest Health section of the Michigan Department of Natural Resources Forestry Division at michigan.gov forward slash forestry.